Hello, and welcome to Do Dance and Clams. This is a Blender 3.4 tutorial showing how to create a disco lighting effect. My original thought was to reflect light off of a mirror ball, but reflected light in Blender is too scattered to produce a noticeable effect on nearby surfaces. I also tried having the facets emit light, but with similar disappointing results. I eventually ditched the mirror ball and switched to instancing and animating spotlights directly. The trick here was figuring out how to control this from inside geometry nodes. In the end, I decided to leave out the mirror ball itself because this is well covered ground in Blender tutorials. It was a lighting effect that I had not seen generated procedurally before, along with a technique for assigning random colors to lighting effects. And this is the final result. And it's what I hoped for. Random lights, randomly colored lights, traveling around an environment, interacting with the objects, all controlled from within geometry nodes. Let's go ahead and put this together. Let's do some quick setup to begin with. First of all, make sure Node Wrangler is enabled under Edit Preferences, Add-ons, Node Wrangler. It is. Next, I know that this will only work in cycles. And I'll flip on GPU computing just to speed things up. In the animation, I'm going to want 160 frames, so let's go ahead and take care of that now, too. 0 to 159. If I could invent a time machine and go back in history and change something, I would have Node Wrangler be the default. I would have frames start counting at 0 inside Blender, and I'd also have Benjamin Franklin reverse the charge on the electron. Be that as it may. I'm going to create a quick environment in Geometry nodes uh, for the light to interact with. I find it easier to reproduce the results that somebody is doing in the tutorial if it's done this way. First, I want a shadow box type effect, so a eight sided room. Start with a cube that is. 30 by 30 by 50, it approximates the uh, typical camera view. Now I want to delete one of these sides. There we go. So now we can see inside. And let's go ahead and set the camera to something like this while we're thinking about it. Control Alt Zero. And because what we're working on is fairly large, let's just go ahead and set the clipping so it doesn't interfere. Select the camera. Camera settings, make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we can see everything from a distance. So now we have our stage. Let's put some objects in here. Quick join geometry to gather everything up. Let's create a smooth four meter ball and let's put this at Minus 18 meters, 12 meters, 30 meters. By the way, I forgot to say this before. I've been meaning to say it at the top of every video. If you're having trouble seeing the text on these boxes, go into the YouTube settings and flip it from auto resolution to 1080p. Everything will be much clearer. And let's do another copy of this. This one at minus 4, 20, minus 7. And let's create a couple of cubes and also throw them into the scene. Control Shift D to duplicate with noodles attached. So the first box will be at minus 7, minus 20, minus 12. And the next one will be at minus 14, minus 12, 8. And I want each of those to be five meters. Now the stage is set. Now let's create a spotlight to use. I know I'm going to want more power. I also know I want a small spot size. 10 degrees is fine. We'll add the color in just a minute. Now let's create a ball to attach the spotlight to. Just need a random object for some new geometry nodes. Let's start with an icosphere. 
Now I'm going to attach a spotlight at every vertex. So I care about how big this is. Call it 2.2 meters to start. And let's start off with a modest two subdivisions. As you crank this, you will exponentially increase the number of spotlights, so be careful. We're going to attach the spots using the instance on points. And this is the first bit of cleverness. So we can just take the spot, drag it into our scene, and use that as an instance. But in order to make this work, you have to click the as an instance. And now we get a whole bunch of spotlights all pointed down. Let's fix that. Easily done. I want to explain this really quick. There's a longer, better explanation for what a line Euler to vector does. I'm going to attach a link to that in my video. So we start with all the spotlights pointing down along the z-axis. And we ask this node to say, what do we need to do for something on the z-axis to be rotated to point along the normal? And that's what it does. So for each and every spot, for its point on the sphere, this will create the proper rotation to move that spot up to align with the normal. Check the video in the link if you want a more detailed explanation. So let's see what we got. It's a little boring because all the lights are white. And this is the next big aha moment in this video. How do we assign a random color to every light? If you're creating this scene manually, you could just have a bunch of different spots give them all unique color. So boring. Turns out you can apply a texture to a light, and where you can apply a texture, you can apply a color. So we're going to select our spotlight, go into the shader editor, click on the use nodes. You will not see the use nodes as an option unless you're in cycles. So in order to see this well, I'm going to kill the default light, and I meant to turn this to 4000 much better. But I'm also going to hide this because we only want the instanced versions of this. Okay, so now we've shown we can do color. How do we make it random? Bring up the object info. We're going to use this random to select a color from a color ramp. So let's do that now. And let's just give ourselves some nice bright primary colors. You could also have these colors controlled by an attribute passed in from the geometry nodes. You might want to do this if you actually had a physical representation of the disco ball and you wanted the lights on the ball to match the spots that were being cast around the room. I'm not going to go that far in this example, so there's no real point. Now we just need to animate this and we'll be done. Go back to geometry nodes. I'm just going to do it with a simple rotation. Position. Take the current frame, divide it by the total number of frames. This leaves 160. Multiply it by 2 pi. That means tau is 2 pi. We will do one complete trip around, so the animation will loop nicely and we'll use that as the angle. That will be used to rotate everything associated with the lights. And let's give this a more interesting axis. And there we go. A little bit hard to see the animation. And to make this even a little bit more interesting, let's duplicate this and have it rotate the opposite way. Give it a different axis so it has a different look to it. We get a 0.5 on all of these and have it rotate the opposite way. And I'm going to go ahead and do a quick animation on this. Go to output properties and this time I'm just going to render directly into a movie. So change that to FFmpeg and Let's get more of a face on view. I'm 
Before rendering this, we do not need max samples. I think 120 to be fine. And then Control F12 to render. And sometime later, we're left with this. I can do Control F11 to see the render. And that's it. Absolutely lovely. I really am a huge fan of geometry nodes for animation, huge fan of geometry nodes for creating geometry, and huge fan of, now a huge fan of geometry nodes for allowing me to manipulate light sources. Just the like the last steps when you take like this node group that controls everything and then duplicate it. So now you have two disk of balls in your room. So much more powerful than keyframe animation. So much more quick to build scenes with. Huge fan of it. For another animation video I've done in the recent past, check the top left. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time.